Ward locate me. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. In the name of Jesus we have prayed. Receiving the miracle of instant healing has been a subject of consideration in our midweek services. And then um, every manifestation is triggered by man's expectation. You don't expect it, you can't get it. If all you want is to have the fine teaching, that's what you have. If you want to see the teaching proved in your life, that's what you have. Receiving the miracle of instant healing. There is nothing God is waiting for but you. He's not preparing any medication somewhere. He has no laboratory. God is not waiting for anybody else to make real his plan in your life but you. For surely there is an end and thy expectation shall not be cut off. It is our expectation that facilitates the end to our struggles. There must be an expectation. Your total health and my total health. He already took it. All we need is to enforce delivery by our faith. Nothing glorifies God in sickness. Nothing. It's our healing that does. It's our deliverance that does. Now, there are certain things we mustn't go back home with tonight. Amen. Lift up your two hands and let Jesus know it. I expect every trace of weakness, every trace of sickness, every trace of pain, every trace of discomfort out of my system. I expect to see your healing hand touch me tonight and set me free for life. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. He never forces his way into anybody's life. He knocks at the door, you are interested, you open the door, you are not interested, you shut the door, he goes to someone else. Jesus, I'm interested in your instant healing miracle tonight. I want to experience your instant healing miracle in my life. Enough is enough. All across the viewing centers, take hold of that, take hold of it, take hold of it with all the force you can muster on your inside. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. For everyone that is expectant, tonight marks the end of every siege of sickness, disease, pains, discomfort, weakness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated, please. I once stated here that faith can be defined as substantiated expectation. What substantiated expectation? You believe because you have found your right in scriptures and is proved by biblical characters so you can get it. Faith is the substance of things expected, the evidence of things not seen. Let's ever be pregnant with expectation when we come into its presence, not just to be
Tonight, every of you is Expected change will take place. Yeah. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Yeah. Receiving the miracle of instant healing. The word immediately, like we have always repeated, or caught 55, 55 times in the Bible, all of which are in the New Testament, and most of which are directly related to healing and deliverance. 55 times. That's to tell you how willing God is. To see you and me healed instantly. Instantly. You ask the mother of a sick child when do you want your child to be healed? The answer is automatic. Now, they say, excuse me now, when do you want this, your sick child to be healed? He said, are you asking me? I, you think I'm mad? I wanted this child healed yesterday. Not today. Today is almost late. God wants you and I healed on the spot. It's not drawing any benefit from our sickness. It's not giving glory to his name. And he's not looking for anything else to heal us. It's the same yesterday, today, today and forever. It's in his name is the I am that I am. What I will use to heal you tomorrow, I have it now. So what am I waiting for? What I need to make you whole tomorrow, I have it with me now. Somebody's walking free tonight. Amen. You remember the theme of the month is I will restore health unto you. Very shortly in this church, there won't be any altar call for anybody to be healed. Amen. You see that in church and you are healed. Because upon Mount Zion there shall be what? Deliverance. And holiness and gospel shall possess their possession. And we saw amazing instant healing testimonies in scriptures to validate this truth. The paralytic man came through the roof and immediately he was made whole. Take your bed, my friend, and go home. And he was gone. The man full of leprosy was made whole instantly as Jesus touched him. Matthew 13 and verse 8. The woman with the issue of blood, Luke 8 and verse 44, immediately was made whole. The flow of blood stopped. And immediately, he, she was made whole. God is still there. Instant healing, ministry in the, healing in the ministry of Peter. We saw the man at the beautiful gate. Jesus made him whole. He said, through faith, God has given him this perfect soundness before you all. Verse 16. We saw Peter's ministry as he ministered to Aeneas. Immediately, the man had not walked for eight years. Immediately, he got up. Acts chapter 9, verse 34 and 35. The good news tonight is that God has everything ready in place. Not today. Was fully settled 2,000 years ago. All we are called to do is to draw on it. And we draw on it by faith. So expect your instant healing now. Amen. But we discover from scriptures that Every redemptive provision is released via revelation. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you your own inheritance among them which are sanctified. That comes to establish that word to Abraham as far as your eyes can see. So it's what you can see that God makes happen in your life. We must be able to see it before God can make it happen in our life. You must be able to see your right to perfect soundness, non-negotiable, settled in heaven forever. You must be able to see it. You must be able to see it. Faith is not a risk. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. 
unbelief is your greatest risk. The devil will make a nonsense of anybody who refuse to embrace the validity, the efficacy, the eternal nature of the truth. It's time to come out of every old wise fable. God's healing provision is for all. Just like salvation is for all. God so loved the entire world he came. And everyone that is saved has the provision of healing and redemption. And all we need to do is to draw on it by faith. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, the word says, according to his divine power has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. How many agree that healing and health pertains to life? That there, there, is no, there is no greater asset than health next only to salvation. That's why Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. That's why disciples went and healing everywhere. Healing everywhere. I mean, among all the things that pertain to life, apart from salvation, is your healing, health, and wholeness. Your healing, health, and wholeness. Every time he send them, he send them, heal the sick. Pray to them the kingdom of God is here, and heal the sick that are there in. So it's just next to salvation, sir. Healing, health, and wholeness is just next to salvation in God's agenda. It's just next to salvation. And you hear people say, health is worth. How true. One plague can clear all your life savings in one minute without mercy. In one minute. Somebody here sold six houses. I've told that story several days. In search of healing and went from country to country and came back zero. Situation the same. He has seven houses in Lagos. They couldn't get the seven to sell because they couldn't get the papers. He saw six. So he became houseless. And Jesus got here, healed him for free. Amen. You won't suffer the plague of disease. So you better believe in your right to healing, health, and wholeness in redemption. It doesn't have mercy on anybody. It can clear anything from off any life. It can get life stranded for years after years. One can be in bed for 50 years. Sickness doesn't care. The devil behind it has no mercy. His nature is wickedness by excellence. There is no trace of mercy in the devil. So, you better catch the light and fulfill your destiny in grand style. You better catch it. He who did not spare his own son but gave him over to us, how much more will he freely give us? Freely give us all things that are there with him. And what are those things? Christ died to obtain for us, Revelation 5, 12, power to tear upon serpents and scorpions and already pass out the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Riches. So you won't become a byword and a proverb in the land. And strength. Wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. All these are there with him. He said, we will freely give us Salvation is the costliest asset in God's concept. He who did not spare his own son but gave him over to us, how much more shall he freely give us all things that are there with him? Your healing is there with him. He says, freely available, much more than salvation. So take it tonight. I start looking for pity. You know, he has not even greeted me since I, I had fever. Okay, what will the greeting do, do to you? Anything you nurse will keep blossoming. You nurse it. 
you created a room for it to blossom. Because somebody was around. You are not doing that before the person came. Mm. Well, oh. <laughs> and after I has gone, you are quite quiet. You don't need that. Get out and walk. Get out from that bed. You don't belong there. Get out from that bed and you'll never be there again. You will never be there again. You will never be there again. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. So it's very important for us to know that every of our inheritance in Christ is transmitted through revelation. God won't do it until you have seen it. And you can't see it and doubt it, even if your name is Thomas. Anything you see, you naturally believe. Anything you believe, you are empowered to become. You can't see it and miss it. You see it, you believe it. When the master said to Thomas, look at my hand. Oh my Lord, my God, I believe you. I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. You know I'm Thomas. My name is Thomas. I must see before I believe. So you, you can't see the truth and doubt it. Our doubt is a proof that we have not seen it. Nobody doubts. Nobody ever doubts what this is. Now, what am I holding in my hand, everybody? You believe it? How? Look, so there is no argument. There is no, okay, why, why do you say so? Uh, you think I'm blind? I say, I can see a microphone. Say, no, it's a stick. Ah. I say, it's a microphone. Get it behind me, Satan. Now, he knows you have seen it. He knows you have seen it. When I saw that he took my infirmity, you, no doctor in this world can make me see otherwise. I said, I've seen this thing. He took. He kind of his head. Went away with it. Never returned it. You said, you saw. You want to be blind. You can't see what the truth took. There is only one person called the truth. You are not the one. You may tell the truth once a while. No, you are not the truth. We are talking about the truth took and then you Say, you saw. You need healing. You need deliverance. Now, I'm, and as simple as that is, it puts every devil of your territory. Every devil of your territory. Somebody's blessed. This is why, as long as the book is closed, Weeping continues. And I wept much, Revelation 5, 4 and 5, because there was no one found worthy to open the book. Not to lose the seeds thereof. Then one of the elders came and said, Weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seeds thereof. Weeping continues, the struggles of life continues until the book is opened in the area of your tears. When the book is open to you, the weeping will stop. When the book on divine healing is open to you, your struggle for healthy living will end. When the book is open to you for breakthroughs by the wisdom of heaven, your struggling in business and career will end. When the book is open to you concerning your prosperity right in redemption, your struggle with finances will end. When the book is open concerning blessings, causes will be averted without struggle. It's all about the opening of the book. And I want you to believe God that whatever is written in that book is written. There is no force in hell that can make the world of no effect. The scriptures cannot be broken. His word is settled in heaven forever. The security stronghold of the world is in heaven. So there is no manipulation here that can tamper with it. You know what? You are coming out of this month never to know sickness or disease again. 
you are ending this month never to know weakness, feebleness, weakness anymore in your life. Remember, stones don't get sick. You need that tape. Every one of you need that. You need that CD or DVD or whatever they call it. You get it. And keep running it until your brain is clean of any other manipulation. Run it. Stones don't get sick. When the chief cornerstone came, he knew no sickness. Even all the young people around him, never, never was anyone reported sick. The nearest sickness we saw there was Peter's mother-in-law, who is a mother-in-law somewhere. But for those 12, they were walking like jackal. Not one of them knew sickness. Hanging around the stone. They were not stones yet. But now we are stones after his order. Now, you will never know the meaning of sickness and disease again in your life. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loud and say, man. That's why it's always a battle to assess the light of this book. It's a battle because when the light comes through, the devil has lost his power. Amen. So you can't read this like you read geography text and read history and read biochemistry. <laughs> you, you get nothing out of it. There's a battle here against your assets. <laughs> There's a battle against my assets. There's no battle against your assets to chemistry. It's just... <laughs> Amen. There, there is no struggle against your assets to any social sciences, any physical sciences, any whatever. But this book, huge barrier. Not by demons. The God of this world himself has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Lest the light is all, all out. He couldn't send demons so he came himself. It's all out against your asses and my asses to the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. It's all out. So it's not something you read and say, yeah, I got it. And you quote it like a parrot. Genesis chapter 1 verse 20, Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. It, it, it doesn't fear your coat. It fears your light. Access to the light. is scared to his pants if he has one. Praise God. He's scared to his pants if he has one. Because the weakness of darkness is in the presence of light. When light breaks out, Darkness bows out, vanishes, vamushes. You can't say there is no struggle at the same time. Just as immediately as darkness bows to light, so your sickness and disease bow to your light on your right to healing, health, and wholeness. Just the same speed, the same speed of light, the same speed of light. Oh. Your blood pressure is high, not mine. I caught the light before you brought your arrow. I cannot have. Shut up. And did I have? No. I don't know the name of any high blood pressure medication in my life, and I've never found out since I won't need it. Now, over three decades after, my blood pressure is as normal as a 30 year old young man. Amen. To the shame of the devil by the power of light. By what? The power of light. The power of light. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, every manipulation of the devil tormenting any one child of God here. Tonight marks the end of it. Yeah. Now, quickly, how do we assess the light of the gospel? Since it's a battle, there's a battle against our access to the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. How do we assess it? One, 
be anxious for nothing but everything by prayer. So prayer is a vital force. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I'm not interested in the stories. I want to assess the wonders. The book is made up of two major elements. The letter and the wonders. Anybody has access to the letters. That's why you can have a PhD in New Testament analysis and not be saved. Amen. But you can put together who wrote what, the date he wrote it archaeologically. You can put together where he said it for the first time and how they said it in two different ways and five. Then you have discovered three of them that are not aligned. So what they call King James, you need to find out Queen James first. <laughs> I mean, you have plenty of argument, but you don't have eternal life. <laughs> now, he has the letters. He has no answer to the wonders. Now, there are stories in the book, and there are mysteries. Everybody has answer to the stories. Even children. You know, they read story book. <laughs> Everybody. Who is the father of Abraham? Who is the mother of Sarah? Where did they come from? Who married them? <laughs> Anybody, anybody has access to the stories. Only the redeemed have access to the mysteries. The stories we get to inform, the mysteries we get to transform. The information we get to inform, but the revelation we get to transform. So we need to pray to break the siege resisting our access to the glorious gospel of Christ in the area of our challenge. Number two, there are some kind of these resistances that won't go except by prayer and fasting. So more often than not, we need to couple our prayer with fasting to break the blindfolding siege of the devil. So we can assess the glorious provision that Christ has made for us in redemption. As long as you are handling that book as a textbook, the kind you have in your profession, you won't get anything. You'll just be loaded with letters until you are weighed down. The letters have weighed you down. There is no life in it. If we didn't go in to ask the Lord, why is this church not growing and engaging? We have been asking that before, but there is nothing. Okay, now let's fast too, so there can be something. So we got into fasting. And on the third day, three days, open the destiny of this church. Three days. How many days? You better mind the devil when it comes to resistance. He doesn't care how long you stay there. Amen. Somebody was speaking to me recently. The ministry has been 20 years, and they are not 50. They are not what? If you check it, not that God didn't call them. The devil just sat down there. And then he didn't know. Say, I bind you. He said, No. You can't bind me with a man in your stomach. You have to. <laughs> me, I'm not bindable at your level. You need a change of level to bind me. Then you take tea and say, I bind you, Satan. He said, Okay. Come and bind me. <laughs> he stays there and he doesn't care how long you stay. Somebody's breaking forth. Yeah. Number three, you study. Trying to find out what is provided in the book that will terminate your struggle. Look for relevant materials on the subject of interest, your subject of interest, and say to them, Jesus, show me the way to this thing. I know it's real. I want to experience it. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God as a workman that will not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Engaging appropriate scriptures to deal with those barriers around your life. He said, give attention to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrines. You give attention. First Timothy 4 and verse 13. 
Paul, the, Bible, the life student of the world, he said, the books that are left with their trust, when you come, bring along with you. One way out is to assess the right world. How forcible are right words. Job 6.26. Your healing word is here. Amen. Your healing word is here. Amen. Now, as you study, ponder your findings till it becomes consumable. Meditate on what you are reading. It's like squeezing the juice out of an orange ball. The orange ball is loaded, but it has to be squeezed for the vitamins in there to come out. So we squeeze the world through meditation to bring out those valuable virtues that it carries. It's meditate upon these things, 1 Timothy 4, 15. And give thyself who led to your findings that thy profiting may appear to all. Meditation is one way to draw maximum profiting from your studies. We think through the world to find out how it applies to us. You get to a point where the Lord is speaking to you directly. On that subject from his word. He picks the verse of scripture for you while you are looking through and says, that's you I'm talking to there. Oh, how love I thy law. It's my meditation all the day long. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies because they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy Testimonies are my meditations. I understand more than the Asian because I keep their precepts. Number five. Engage with your findings. This is what God has spoken. Now I'm putting it to work in my life. Otherwise, you'll be deceiving your own self. Engage with your findings. Engage with your findings. Do whatever your findings demand to do. Speak only what your findings permit you to speak. Engage with your findings to actualize the validity of your findings in your life. Please never approach this book forever on any subject matter like another latest book. There's a battle against your access and my access to this book. When Jesus gave up the ghost, the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom, providing open access to all. Only the high priest had access before. But everybody now has access. But there's a battle against the God of this world. By the God of this world, against your access and my access to the things behind the veil. Where the mysteries reside. Where the revelations are found. Where the tables of the covenant are found. Let's close tonight by saying this. Your healing is ready. Amen. But from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violent and the violent take it by force. That is the force of faith. Not the force of activism, the force of faith. You know how that paralytic man took his own? They say there's no room. There's no way to enter where Jesus is. Is there a roof? They say, yes, take me through the roof. We said to it, we said to it later. They opened, they call carpenter, they opened the place. They removed the POP if they have one. They put the man inside one and they threw him down like a bucket. Jesus saw their faith, not their activity. Jesus saw their faith. He says, son, your sins are forgiven you. They say, ah, you can't forgive sins. Look at you. Look at your nose. He said, now, which one is easier? Your sins are forgiven. Or that's one, take your bed. Okay, young man, take your bed and go home. He carried his bed. The man who could not move and was jumping with his bed. 
Even those who are well, how many can carry their bed? This man was so well that he could carry his bed immediately. He wasn't recovering. <laughs> there was no recovery process. When Jesus heals you, no recovery process. He cleans you out on the spot. Jesus saw their faith. I must live here today totally made whole. No more question mark on my health. No more question mark on my strength. No more question mark on my vigor. I'm getting out of here totally made whole. Christ has done the job, his part. It's my turn. He's waiting for me. No devil can stop the way against my faith. Faith has capacity to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. You are free. And to maintain your head, keep serving God. Keep what? Keep serving God. It will ensure sickness don't come near your life. Just keep saying, thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. He will bless your bread and your water. He will take sickness away from you. Just keep serving God. Every branch in me that bears fruit, it keeps fit. It keeps fit. It keeps fit. To maintain your head is to keep serving God. Not sitting down and then loitering around all over the places and be doing guy guy around town. You keep serving God in truth and indeed he will keep you fit by himself. When Jesus keeps you fit, you are fit. No devil can make you unfit when Jesus keeps you fit. No devil can make you unfit and make you sick when Jesus keeps you fit. Hallelujah. Somebody blessed today. What a joy that you are in a church that does not just teach Father Christmas healing. But teaches you the responsibility that gets across to you. Some have been laying hands upon by almost everybody in this world. Their head has lost ear, maybe like my own. Yet, they are not healed. That is what you must do, sir, to get healed. You won't do it. You become letting prayer all over town. And you become a prayer project, global prayer project. I just came back from so and so place and apostle so and so lay hands on me. And I came to Canaan land and Papa lay hands on me. And I still went to many other places. I, I, I have about 20 hands on my head. <laughs> they say, well done. But I'm not it yet. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Somebody's breaking loose tonight. Somebody's taking it by force tonight. It's a fight, the good fight of faith. So you can lay hold on your rights in eternal life. Find a good fight of faith. Lay hold on your rights in redemption. We are unto that art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. You don't fight, you don't win. How many want to fight it out tonight? Lift up your right hand where you are. And call that thing by a name. Whatever has a name, bows to the name of Jesus. I'm getting out of here free forever. You can't torment my life anymore. It's my right in redemption. Total health is my right in redemption. Perfect wholeness is my right in redemption. Perfect wholeness is my right in redemption. Thank you, Jesus. I'm living here totally made whole. Tonight is my night of transformation. Tonight is my night of transformation. I'm free today. I'm free forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can I tell you how powerful light is? I caught this light 1979 July on the Ogunpa flood day. Amen. That it took my infirmity. And I've lived with that light till now. My wife was just telling me that when we are fasting, well, can you check your timetable for going out? The going out is inside me. It's not that I'm planning, it's inside me. If I, if I don't go out, my body can even go out on its own. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you better serve Jesus and live a super healthy life. I'm not on any medication, not even vitamin. I have enough vitamin to share. You need vitamin, just come. When I lay hands on you, vitamin will flow to your body. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Now, you are here tonight. 
and you are not born again yet, healing is the children's bread. God owes his own children healing. It's the leftover that others share. But you have right to the table while waiting for the crumbs. And God is having many more children today. There may not be crumbs. <laughs> Amen. So why line up for the crumb when you have a seat on the table? You are here tonight, you want to become a child of God, you want to be a member of God's own household, you want to be a beneficiary of God's healing provision for his children, you want to live a super healthy life for your life, and much more importantly, you want to have eternal life and make it to heaven at the end of your journey and wear a crown as you serve God. Wherever you are tonight, both here in Canaan land and in all the VN centers, stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else is standing up. Stand up now and receive life. Have a new beginning. Experience the reality of redemption. Somebody else is standing up. Stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Stand to your feet right now. Jesus loves you more than you ever can imagine. Would you stand to your feet right now and receive this Jesus into your life and have a brand new beginning. Now, there are people here tonight that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. I don't know where you are, but you are here. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus and stop being one leg in and one leg out. It can be very frustrating. You don't make much out of life if you make anything out of it at all. You want to rededicate your life to Christ and come on full swing with Jesus. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. That Jesus, I'm going to expect from henceforth only from you. Jesus, be my Lord and let, give me an experience of a life transforming change in my life. Stand to your feet. Somebody else is doing that. Maybe you are once saved, but at the time, there was a disconnection between you and God. You want to reconnect back to God. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. God bless. Somebody else needs to get up. Wherever you are, get up quickly. Get up quickly. This is your night. Everyone standing up, both in the first and second call, please make your way straight around here. Just come down here. Come down quickly. Come down quickly. Jesus loves you. Just come down here. Come down quickly. Come down. Anybody can still stand and join us. In all the viewing centers, approach the altar. The pastors are there waiting to receive you. Waiting to receive you. Just move. Move. You are free to stand and join us now. It's not late. Somebody else is coming. Please come quickly. Come quickly. This is your chance for a change of story. Come quickly. Come and experience the reality of new life. The reality of new birth. Come quickly. If any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things have passed away. All things have become new. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Jesus is waiting. Jesus loves you more than you ever can imagine. Somebody is jumping up wherever you are. Jump up quickly. Jump up quickly and meet us. Jump up quickly and meet Jesus here. Come and experience a dramatic change in your life. Now, everyone, everywhere, both here and across our VM centers, across Lagos and Otter, please bow your head and lift up your right hand before the Most High God and pray this simple prayer of faith after me, saying, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you tonight. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm not a child of God. I'm not a child of light. The powers of darkness cannot afflict me anymore. I'm free at last. And I'm free forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each one of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered all the days of your life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please walk through this door. You complete your form and pass it over to them. Um, be blessed. It's a brand new day for you. Shall we all rise, please? Shall we all rise? Amen. 
expect your health to be totally restored tonight. Yeah. Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. If your friend comes calling, asking for help, and it's your power, in the power of your hand to do it today, don't ask him to come tomorrow. Is it in God's power to heal you today? Why will he ask you to come tomorrow? Every statement of scripture is a description of how God relates with his people. Why will he ask you tomorrow? Because he has it ready today. And it won't be more than what he has today, tomorrow. So what are you? He's not waiting for nobody. He's not waiting for anything but you. He's waiting for nobody but me. You are the one to take it if you are interested. Are you interested in taking your own tonight? <laughs> Lift up your two hands to heaven and enforce. Don't take anything casual. I normally have backache. It's not normal. It's not normal. I normally have headache. It's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. I'm normally weak. When I wake up in the morning, it's only in the afternoon that like I pick up say, you are not a lizard. No, it's not normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. No sickness is normal. No weakness is normal. No oversleep is normal. It's not normal. Whatever is not normal is not normal. Now reject it. 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 No pain is normal. No growth is normal in your body. No growth is normal. Tonight, every growth must disappear. Every pain must go. Headache is not normal. Stomachache is not normal. No. Excessive urination is not normal. No. Somebody's walking to liberty right now. You are the one. Come on, cry out. Cry out. A cry of faith. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Have you not read? Through idleness are building decays. And by slothfulness of hands, a house drops through. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 18. Serving God is what keeps our system in shape. Come and say, serving God. The value of serving God is 1,001 times jogging about. Serving God. Jogging about us. People die jogging around. Though. They die by jogging around. <laughs> I know a number of my friends who play golf around. But I'm playing Jesus around. I tell you something. I'm sanded and stone. <laughs> Serving God is one way to keep your body from decadence. How many take that tonight? Right? Because it will keep you fit permanently. Yeah. Now, expect that as you take the communion tonight, by the prophetic word that has gone forth, and by the mystery of the communion, you are walking free. Yeah. Expect the growth in your system to disappear. Yeah. Expect that spinal injury to get out of your body. Yeah. Expect that back pain, that chest pain to dissolve forever. Yeah. Expect that terminal disease to be terminated. Yeah. Expect sickle cell anemia to give way. Yeah. Expect cancer to be dissolved. Yeah. Expect HIV to disappear. Yeah. Expect hepatitis B to disappear. Yeah. Expect your body to be free from molestation. In the name of Jesus. Father, let the stewards take their positions right now. We declare this table as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. And by this mystery, I decree instant healing miracles in this service tonight. Waves of instant healing miracles. Your own is there. 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 Thank you, Father. Now, this is the price by which you are bought. He said, You have been bought with your price, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord's. The blood, we have a blood price on our life. It guarantees glorifying God with our body and our spirit. Therefore, whatever does not glorify God in anybody's life, in anybody's body, as you partake of this communion, it disappears from your life. <laughs> Expect it, and you will receive it. Amen. Thank you, Father. Please get seated as we serve the table of the Lord. Go ahead.
We are taking instant miracles, instant healing testimonies after this communion. So expect your own. Expect every abnormality in your system to give way. Expect it tonight and you'll have it the way you want it. God's got to know me marching to the land. The leaven sees the sun with healing in your hands, with everlasting joy, life forevermore. In this army of God of power, oh, in this army I have God of power. God's got to know me. God's got to know me. My train, marching through the land. The leaven sees the sun with healing, healing in your hands. With I forever more In this army have God of power In this army In this army have God of power Shake us go to the army God's got an army Marching through the land The Libra sees the sun We're healing in your hands Everlasting joy I forever more In this army I've got a part in this army of God. Say, God's got to know me. God's got to know me. Marching through the land. Marching through the land. The river sees the sun. The river sees the sun. Healing in your hands. Healing in your hands. Everlasting joy. Everlasting joy. Forevermore. Forevermore. In this army. In this army. In this army. celebrate this miracle working God has touched your life by the prophetic word that came forth tonight and he has touched your soul and your body by the mercy of the communion just jump out in front and Jesus will be glorified as we celebrate his faithfulness in your life thank you Jesus Jehovah turns my life around hey! Jehovah turns my life around he makes a way where there is no way I said Jehovah, I'm the fight. 
Somebody give the Lord the biggest clap offering tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the outbreak of light. Thank you for springing the head of your people up speedily. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Would you thank God for your own package tonight? Thank him for your own package. It's going home with you. Your package is going home with you. You are not arriving there with any sickness or disease. Come and give God thanks. Celebrate him. Glorify him. In Jesus' precious name. Please get seated. All the viewing centers, you may shut down right now and take those instant testimonies. And we join up in four minutes time. Amen. Hallelujah. Reverend Yomi Adeyemi had suffered diabetes for six years, but right now totally healed. All the symptoms disappear to the glory of God. Give the Lord praise, everyone. Osamide Sarah, Osamide Sarah Irabo, for three years had had intense pain in the stomach. But as soon as she partook of the communion, totally set free to the glory of God. Give the Lord praise. Unkoli Kapita, for two years, had severe ulcer pain. But as she partook of the communion tonight and received the prophetic word, she was totally set free to God's glory. Give the Lord praise, everyone. Celebrate God. Victor Aquata, for three days, has had very intense pain in the chest and in the ear and was totally set free right now to the glory of God. Amen. Sister Mary has had a demonic oppression and could not... Be, that could not be diagnosed but tonight by the prophetic word every one of the effects of that has gone back now she's totally set free to the glory of God amen free forever yes. you won't know any bandage anymore yes. Mrs. Bashan Rupees has had general body pain all over the body but totally set free now to the glory of God also. Give the Lord praise. That pain is gone forever. Falano Olanike has had chronic cough and pains in the knee. And instantly also she was set free to God's glory. Amen. Shall we all rise please tonight and celebrate God? Every testimony is significant. It's the act of God. We don't make light of any of them. Now, please lift up your two hands and celebrate Jesus for these instant testimonies that go to validate the hand of God in our midst. Thank you, Jesus. What is this to you? That something happened on the spot tonight means your own has happened. And as they went, they were cleansed. As you depart from this place, whatever baggage followed you here that's not of God drops off your life. You are returning home tonight, a brand new person. Yeah. You're going back is saved. Yeah. Your arrival is saved. Yeah. Your life becomes a testimony from tonight. Yeah. All these amazing instant testimonies tonight, they are declared permanent. Yeah. All those hand of God upon your life is declared permanent. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be on your way back to your seat. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Yeah. Amen. We have quite some tracts here to facilitate our engagement on the field. Uh, we made it in currency form so you can find out which one applies to whosoever. We give it to him. Amen. Amen. You don't give a child on Jesus Christ delivers from business stagnation. He has no business. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay. Uh, come and see. Jesus still gives miracle babies today. The child in the primary six, does he need this? You now give it to him. Come and see. Say, I can't come. <laughs> I don't need miracle babies. I'm also a baby. <laughs> Amen. So you apply the trust to the people to whom it's applicable, and that will be the best way to spend it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, stretch forth your hands here, 
and let's release these tracks to go bless mankind across our entire harvest field, stirring the faith of men and women to see Jesus as the master solution provider to every human question. Now, search for one. Holy Ghost, breathe upon this trust. Breathe upon this trust and let each of them solve problems. Bring people out of their dungeon. Bring them to the limelight of the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. We have this, I think, across our various locations. So you can take some, but make sure everything you take is properly utilized. They are not for your album. They are for the people. Each flyer here, each track here represents a person. Don't bury any person's destiny in your pocket. Let it go out. Jesus is Lord. Somebody was about committing suicide and they saw that Jesus, they gave him a track. Jesus delivered from indebtedness. Maybe he looked like somebody indebted. They gave it to him. He put it in his pocket. The drug he was going to use to drug himself to death was in that pocket. So he didn't read this. Oh, I put it there. I'm going to die. By the time he wanted to put the drug out, the trust came out. <laughs> Jesus delivered from indebtedness. <sighs> no, I will die. <laughs> <laughs> he came here the following morning with death written on his face, convicted by the content of this trust. You can't tell what this will do in somebody's life. Please do it diligently, and Jesus will be glorified. Your flyers are there. Next Sunday, nobody comes empty. Just, just be determined. Whatever God tells you to do is what he wants to do through you. Just believe him. Just what? Believe just believe him. Just believe him. Just believe him. Just believe him. Whatever he says for you to do is what he wants to do through you. Asking you permission. Would you let me do this through you? It's not what he says you can do. Just believe him. He does it through you. Everybody here will meet his own benchmark. Amen. And I tell you, each one here will earn God's commendation. Amen. And the name of the Lord shall be glorified. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We do thank God for the name of strength, everybody. Thank God for the name of strength. Thank God for what the week holds for you. Bountiful harvest week, that is it. And it's yours. Celebrate Jesus. Magnify him. Give him glory and praise. Speak to the many days of the week. The remaining days of this week are mine. I'm making the most out of it. Continue to decree, speak to the remaining days of the week. Declare and it shall be established. Decree and it shall be established. Decree and it shall be established. Lift your voice and begin to give him thanks. Give praise, give glory unto the name of the Lord. He is worthy of praise. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of praise and worthy to be glorified. Accept our thanksgiving, for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. As was earlier announced, we have the tracks, we have the flyers. You pick the ones that are required, and every one of them reaches somebody for Jesus, not only just distributed, but compelling each one to come. And as we do so, God will honor each one of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together, surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. It is my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall be the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulations, somebody else. Go be blessed.